So our next topic um, category is location and transportation. The idea behind this um, category or indicator is that it would include strategies or promote strategies and ideas that would reduce the costs or the pollution or the depletion of resources that are related to people transporting, transporting <laughs> to the daily transportation of people to and from the building. It originally grew out of the sustainable sites um, credit and it was kind of took parts of that um, because it was deemed that it was important in its own right and then it added other bits on. I suppose the thing about this is a lot of project teams might not have actually a say in where the project is located so in that case you could use this credit to just highlight what's good about the location or maybe try and mitigate those bits that aren't doing well and then if you do actually have the opportunity to be part to participate or to take part in actually selecting the site then you can actually use these credits as a guide that would try and pick the site with the least impact. It's not just about um, gas emissions, it's also about trying to promote um, physical activity, so like uh, biking or walking um, and to do with health as well, health effects of that. So that's kind of evident when you look at the number of points available for these um, for this category. So there's 16 points available and they can either be gotten if you do the lead for neighbourhood development location rating, which is kind of a separate thing. So there's 16 in total available for that, or you can get the 16 by adding up um, anywhere between the credit two and credit eight, depending on many of those you get. Um, you can see though, it's not just about um, greenhouse gas emissions or vehicle emissions. It's also about the facilities that are available and actually the footprint of the car parking spaces are there are there so it's about kind of transit issues but it's also about site issues to do with density um, ecology biodiversity those kinds of things so the first way you can earn credits for this category you can earn between 8 and 16 is to actually locate the project within a lead for neighbourhood development uh, rated area. So the idea is that you'd avoid development in inappropriate sites, you'd reduce vehicle miles travelled, you'd enhance livability and improve human health etc. So in, it has to be at least certified, that's, where it goes, that's why it goes between 8 and 16, so depending on whether the lead neighbourhood development rating area is a certified or a silver or a gold or a platinum and also related to what um, other rating you have, so whether it's a, a design, uh, a new construction or a core and shell, for example, or a school or a healthcare, your actual project will, there's a matrix there depending on how many points you get. Obviously you get lower number if it's just a certified neighbourhood development area and higher if it's a platinum, um, so, but it needs to be at least the certified and it's a mutually exclusive credit so if you are going for credits under that you're not eligible to earn other points under the location and transportation category. The next credit is about sensitive land and protecting it and there's one point available for that and the idea is that you would avoid the development um, of on environmentally sensitive lands or reduce the environmental impact from the location of a building on a site. There is two ways to achieve this. You either locate the project on previously developed land or else you locate it on previously developed land that doesn't meet the sensitive land criteria. So it's not prime farmland, it's not flood, in a floodplain, it's not a habitat that's threatened or has endangered species, it's not within 100 feet of a water body and it's not within 50 feet of um, wetlands except for minor improvements um, and those minor improvements would be things that would be undertaken to actually enhance them um, as long as that's open to all the building users of the, of the project. So the third credit is about the next credit is looking at the density of your site and actually what other kind of uses are nearby to the site. The aim or the intent of this credit is to conserve the land and protect farmland by encouraging development in areas that already have existing infrastructure. It's already connected. It's, the idea is to also then promote walkability and the efficiency of the transportation to reduce vehicle distance so that you can actually walk to some of these uses and it's a dense enough site so that, you know, the, 
there's things to walk to uh, and to improve public health by encouraging that walking. Again, there is um, two options within it and you'll notice that's an and or. So you could go, you could do both. You could get the maximum points for option one and option two, which will give you your five points overall. But the first option um, is to locate the site, uh, locate the project on a site where the surrounding density within a quarter mile, and that's about 400 metres radius, meets what's called either a separate residential and non-residential density or a combi combined density value. And tables are given in the manual that would show how you would use that. That's basically, you'd be comparing the density of the the project against the kind of buildable area and um, there's both SI units and Imperial units and you get a particular number of credits depending on what that is. Um, and the second option is to locate the building within a half mile walking distance of four to seven, uh, which you get 1.4 or more than eight, which you get 2.4 of existing and publicly available diverse uses. And again, what those diverse uses are, are given in the manual and include things like banks or pharmacies or libraries and things like that. The fifth credit is about how close the project site is to quality transit and what the, one, the intent of this is to encourage development in site locations that have multimodal transportation choices or otherwise reduce motor vehicle use in somehow <clears throat> some way, thereby reducing greenhouse gas emissions, air pollution and other health harms associated with motor vehicle use. So the requirement is to either locate the project within a quarter mile walking distance of a bus, a streetcar or rideshare stops or to locate it within a half mile walking distance of bus rapid transit stops or light or heavy rail or commuter rail stations or ferry terminals. Those stations could be existing, but they also can be planned if they are cited, funded and constructed under construction by the date of the certificate, certificate of occupancy and they're complete within 24 uh, months of that date. So um, you have a bit of scope there and you need to look at both weekday and weekend trip minimums um, and there's stipulations under both of those that have to be met in order to get the, um, the credit. The sixth credit is about providing bicycle facilities. So the idea is that you are trying to promote bicycling and transportation efficiency, you're trying to reduce vehicle distance travelled again and also that thing about improving public health by encouraging uh, physical activity. So there's a couple of different levels of requirement here. The first is that you would locate the project within 200 yards of a bicycle network that connects within three miles to one of the following. So either 10 diverse uses and this is the same diverse uses that we came across um, a few slides earlier. So the second part of this is if it's um, commercial enterprise that you provide short term bike parking for two and a half percent of the peak visitors and that's a minimum of four bike parking spaces or and all and long term storage for five percent of the commercial occupants. Again, that's another minimum of four. So it's a minimum of eight altogether. Those bike parking spaces need to be within 30 metres of the entrance to the building. And not only that, you need to provide a shower, one shower for the first 100 occupants of the building and then uh, one additional shower for every additional 150 occupants. And another aspect, the third part, that if it's a residential development that you need to provide long term bike storage for 30% of all residents. And again, that's a minimum of one per residential unit. So you can see that just to get one point, you need to provide a lot of things. Um, so this might be where the cynic comes in and says, while bike parking and storage might be a reasonable thing to have, it might be something that gets axed for budget reasons or just space reasons or just thinking reasons because if you're using the system you might deem it not worth your effort just to get one point. The seventh uh, credit is about reducing our reliance on car parking and cars and car parking spaces and that's to minimise the environmental harms associated with those facilities um, including just dependence on a car, the amount of land it cons consumes and the rainwater runoff from that. Um, so the requirement is to not exceed the code parking capacity 
and to provide capacity is actually below that base ratios recommended by the Parking Consultants uh, Council and that's um, a table that's in the Institute of Transportation Engineers Transportation Planning Handbook 3rd edition um, and there's tables within there that gave the baselines and all of these are referred to in the lead manual um, and how far below the baseline um, is below here it's dependent on some other issues so you have to not exceed that and actually go below it and the other thing you have to do is give five percent uh, preferred parking for carpools and that is to encourage carpooling which might otherwise kind of impose restrictions on people people don't maybe want to do it so you're trying to encourage basically a lifestyle style change there to for people to kind of go for carpooling instead um, so the reduction below the baseline given in the Parking Consultants Council guidance, in case one, where you haven't achieved the location and transport credit four on density and diverse uses and uh, credit five on quality transit, if you haven't achieved either of those, then a 20% reduction from the base ratio is required. But where you have it earned at least, uh, it's in a dense area and you've earned at least one of those, um, then you have to do a 40% reduction from the base ratio in order to get this credit seven um, for reducing the parking footprint. So sometimes there could obviously be a conflict between um, what the development plan or planners here are requiring in terms of parking requirement and then what the lead um, category credit here is asking you to do. So it can be difficult to square that circle. The eighth credit and the final credit and location and transport is to do with green vehicles and again it's kind of obvious you're trying to reduce pollution by promoting alternatives to conventionally fueled uh, vehicles. The requirement is to give 5% of preferred parking for green vehicles and that has to be distributed across all parking sections so it's kind of equally um, distributed so if you've got short term parking or long term parking that that 5% covers across the, the two and if you don't do that you have to give a parking discount for green vehicles of at least 20% and that's um, publicly posted at the entrance um, and available to any green vehicle that's coming in so you have to do that and you also have to um, either install an electric vehicle charging stations for at least 2% of the parking spaces that you have and at the same time encourage off-peak char charging of that car such as demand response or time of use pricing or if you don't do that then you have to have some kind of an alternative fueling or some kind of battery switching service to serve vehicles that would equal to 2% of the parking spaces so again there's kind of two two to three things to do there to get that one point. And that's the end of the location and transportation uh, section.